Hi, my name is Josephine Majaja. And I'm Jennifer Zay. And this is our research on the non-motorized toilet lid. Preventing the spread of diseases and germs. So the essential question we wanted to tackle when figuring out this research project was what is something that hasn't been updated in the last couple decades? So for us, the answer was toilets. So yes, there have been the improvements, you know, from the um, outhouse toilet to the modern toilet we have today, but the improvements to a modern toilet in both commercial and domestic environments have been relatively few in the last couple decades. So why is this important? Why is this a problem? And why do we need to update these toilets? One, the first um, factor is because of the contact that we have in this environment. So uh, humans or a pe person averagely uses a toilet daily for around five to six times a day. And that's about 2,000 flushes per year. And because this environment is such a high contact environment, it's important to improve the hygienicness and the sanitation of this uh, environment. Uh, the second reason is because of research done by Charles P. Gerba at the University of Arizona. Basically what his research was, was basically on the aerosol effect. And what the aerosol effect is, is basically when you flush your toilet lid, it causes, or when you flush your toilet, it causes, <laughs> it causes the toilet water, the water in the toilet to swirl. And that swirling motion causes the contaminants contained inside your toilets to shoot up into the air up to 15 meters in what are called aerosol plumes. And these aerosol plumes can be found on, researchers have found that these aerosol plumes can be found, the contaminants from these aerosol plumes can be found on restroom surfaces like mirrors, sinks, um, toothbrushes, <laughs> and etc. as well as can, can have the potential to contain dangerous bacteria and viruses that are dangerous to human health, which is why we wanted to create this project in order to reduce the impact of the aerosol effect. Um, moreover, with the, in the light of the coronavirus, this was not one of our initial um, reasons, but it just highlights the importance of our new update or to this technology is because um, research, research research has suggested that improvements to or the coronavirus can be spread through fecal matter which is why containing that and sand, containing that you know the contaminants and the particulates in that is so important so that is why we created the non-motorized toilet lid and so a lot of public facilities don't have lids in their cells because it's an additional cost for their entrepreneurs but as research does show, it's beneficial for the consumers. And so a lot of hospitals, they have patients who find it very difficult to maneuver around like having that lid and putting it down, putting it back up, putting it back down. And so it's just very difficult for them. And we want to make it more efficient and more easier for them to have access to the toilet environment. And then we also wanted to create several design criteria and specifications to ensure the success of our project. So we, want, we wanted in at least 80% accuracy of our mechanisms so in our prototype and our final design, it did show that. And then we wanted the time taken to close the lid to be under 5.97 seconds, which is the time it takes for the toilet, toilet to flush and like the water to go down. And in our prototype, I believe it was 2.288 seconds, yes. And then in our final design, it was 4.985 seconds. And so in our prototype, we had that hard close system. And then in our final design, we had that soft close system. And we changed it so that it can have minimized impact, which is our third design criteria. And then with the prototype, instead of going like this, it'll go slower. And so that'll reduce the slam or any damage to our toilets, which is what every customer wants. And then we wanted it to have a sensitive lever and then a, a no use of external energy, which is why we wanted that flush valve to go, like we only wanted to use the energy from that flush, flush valve which did happen in our prototype and our final design. We wanted our system to be fit and adjustable for all types of toilets, especially nowadays with advanced technology. There's like those buttons, and we wanted to have it to be adjustable to those buttons, as well as the flush valve, the traditional flush valve. And then we wanted it to be affordable, durable, customer friendly, and so that will make it more efficient and easier for the patients, I mean not the patients, the customers, and they'll have a lot of easy access to it. And so one thing about our prototype, or like our final design, is that it's actually made of plastic. And that's because we did not want to use metal because that will rust eventually, especially with having water surrounding it. And then we didn't want it to erode or have any rust. Yeah. And so we have, we 3D printed our final design. And again, this is not guaranteed the material we will use, but it's just what we had access to in order to create these models. So that's why they're different materials. Um, so the first, uh, okay. 
The first thing we're going to look at is the um, hard close system. So basically here are the pieces. This is the handle attachment right here, which is 3D printed. This part attaches onto your handle, um, on your toilet seat, and then we have this L-shaped piece which attaches to this handle piece right here. And basically when you flush a toilet, it rotates upward like this. And then here's the second part. This is what we call the I-shaped part. Basically we have this hinge right here, um, if you want to look at that, um, a hinge. And this goes onto your toilet tank or the back of your toilet in the tank. Mm -hmm. And then that's attached to this I-shaped piece right here, just like an I-shaped piece which can rotate up and down. And again, this, this piece rests over this L-shaped piece. So when the L-shaped piece um, rotates upward, it pushes the I-shaped piece forward, which causes the toilet to also be pushed forward. Or toilet to, to close, essentially. Here, let's just... <laughs> um, here is our other parts. This is the soft close system. Basically what happens in the soft close system is this part attaches to the base of your toilet on the back behind it. Um, and then that, this part right here, this one, is attaches to your toilet lid. And basically these two pieces are attached through a torsion spring, which basically when the toilet falls, it catches it just before um, it closes. So that's why we have a soft close system. And obviously we had to include the soft close system because we did not want to harm the toilet. We did not want to have any damage for the toilet, which is why we created the soft close system because it just would not have been you know, practical to have something that just slams your toilet and slowly degrades it and also is loud and noisy. So that is essentially our final design. Yeah. And so the times it takes for the toilet to go down or like the lid to go down with the soft close system, it did increase, which is what we expected because we're trying to like decrease the time for it so that it minimizes the impact. And that can be shown right here. So like, yeah. And then in conclusion, we did find that the soft close system was the best for our product. And so also it, in the future works, we wanted to increase a lot of our data samples. So instead of just testing 10 times like we did, we want to do it like 100 or 1,000 times so that we can ensure the success and accuracy of our data and be more precise with it. And then we also wanted to compare our uh, the hard closed system, the soft closed system, having a lid, not having a lid. We wanted to swab the bacteria growth on or the bacteria in surrounding environments. So like we'll swab our mirrors, our floors, our sinks, and even like maybe our toothbrushes. And we'll see and if the bacteria growth will actually be different and if it did prevent the spread of any diseases and germs because bacteria growth is a good indicator of that. Yeah, also one more thing I did mention when I was talking about our design is on our poster you can also see the six pieces oh, yeah. on the bottom right here. These are our 2D CAD renderings of them. And then you can see how it attaches onto the toilet through this figure right here in the middle diagram if you can kind of see the location of where that is. But anyways, um, you guys might be asking why not just close your toilet lid after using the restroom. So our project is not meant to just close your toilet lid, it's also to make a more efficient design. This um, attachment is actually not supposed to be an attachment in the future. What we want to do is incorporate that into the way that toilet manufacturers manufacture toilets. So this design will already be manufactured into the toilet seat design. So it's, it's meant to make it more efficient for this process to occur and to minimize the aerosol effect. Um, not just having, just not, not just you closing your lid, it's meant to make it more efficient, make it more sanitary, and just an overall improvement to the toilet design. And then obviously we have the attachment just to test how the design works and how we can like feasibly do it and just see what design works best. And then on top of that, um, for people who do not, who will have older toilets, that they don't want to go out and buy a new toilet model, um, they can purchase the attachment. Uh, separately instead. Yeah. Um, also in terms of future work we also want to make the system manipulate it in a way where we can change maybe the length of the levers or the handle attachment in and of itself to make the toilet lid close even before the flush occurs so we can minimize even more of the aerosol effect. And then also um, we wanted to make it, like she said again, adjustable to the modern types of toilet designs that you can read about in our future work and also maybe potentially attach some sort of sanitizer or spray that goes along with it to spray inside the toilet bowl um, after it closes to even more protect and prevent the spread of disease and germs. Yeah, so that's our non-motorized toilet lid. Thank, Thank you. you for listening.